Hello my friends, I hope today's video doesn't put you to sleep because we are talking all about Medazza Hey, that's not right. By the end of today's video, you will be a biblical scholar. That's not what it's about. Today's video is a huge review of Versed skincare. I switched my entire routine to Versed skincare for the past three weeks, and I'm here to tell you how it went. So you all know I did a poll asking what brands you wanted to see me review, and the top two were Glow Recipe, which I've done, and also Versed, which I... Uh, bought a lot from. I bought a lot from. And if you are new to this channel, please know that if you are looking for just a review on one product, there are always timestamps and links to everything in the description box below. And while I did purchase all of these products, the links below are affiliated. If you make a purchase through those, it does help support this channel. So let's get into this. I want to start with a little bit of info on how things went for me. What do I think of the brand as a whole? So in spite of having 14 products in this video and some accessories, the entire amount of money that I spent on Versed is under $200, which is really impressive and goes to show that the prices on these products are very affordable. They have overall lower percentages of actives, but don't let that deter you. Again, it's very interesting to me that I'm sitting here at the end of this trial and my skin is overall really quite clear. However, I will also tell you that uh, for me personally, there are things I wish I'd done differently in this trial. Specifically, I wish I had layered the two serums that I purchased rather than alternate days with them. Because those percentages are so low and because I'm so used to higher percentages, I think that might have gone better for my skin. It might be, it's already clear, but I did have a time of the month breakout and I think I might have uh, already managed to get rid of those scars if I did that as opposed to the alternating that I did. Which is all to tell you, if you are a bit more advanced, I still think you can absolutely find holy grails in this brand. Not even kidding, some of these products are incredible and you can see my skin is very, very well hydrated and nourished. But... If you need higher percentages of actives, this may not be the end all be all brand for you. And yet, if you are new to skincare, oh my goodness, this is such a good starting point for you. Y'all, so many people are new to skincare and run out and buy products like The Ordinary's Peeling Solution, and that is just not for beginners at all, in spite of its price tag, not at all for beginners, this is much more suited to someone who is new to skincare. Speaking of this brand being for beginners, I love that they have this very clear, very straightforward system on all of the packaging where you can determine what a product is actually made for. So they have different logos for dryness, for aging skin, problem skin, dullness. Again, just very easy to see what it is that you're getting with these products. My hair is gonna be clipped back for the rest of this video. Oh my gosh, I just asked Alexa the temperature and she told me we have a feels like of 100 degrees. <laughs> Explains a lot, because our house is set to 76. Y'all, I'm sweating from my neck over here. Let me tell you. This is the stuff nobody expects from New Orleans. People do not expect our city to be as incredibly hot as it is. It is so so what I'm gonna do in today's video is take you through my AM routine, my PM routine, and I think we'll actually, we'll start with some of the tools that I bought or accessories. This is the Instant Gratification at Home Dermaplaning Tool. I have never seen a dermaplaning device like this for such a low price. It is actually mind-blowing that Verst managed to do this. Comparable products are about $100 and up. You do get an extra blade when you purchase it, and it looks like soon they will have a refill pack coming to the website for uh, $9.99 for three. And so far, by the way, I'm still on my very first one. It says you can use it. Here it is. Replace the blade after four uses, and I've only used it twice so far. I'm going to tell you honestly, this has a little bit of a learning curve to it, so don't be surprised if you don't love it on the very first use. You kind of have to get used to holding it at an odd angle. You have to pull your skin just slightly so that you are holding your skin flat. But what you will notice on your first use is how much more smooth your skin is. It removes any of those little baby hairs and it does give you a light physical exfoliation. So do make sure you're not pairing this with other chemical exfoliators or other physical exfoliators. Here's a little cheapy razor to compare it to. So what I would say in terms of actually using these is that you do get a much more 
clean shave with the dermaplaning system here as opposed to a disposable razor. You can just kind of, I mean, you can even see there's a big difference in the quality. Plus you can, of course, replace the tips with these, which is of course a lot less waste than these plastic tools right here. So overall, this actually is a very nice product. There is something I wanted to comment on with it though. This is hilarious to me. I was on the website looking at the prices and the reviews and somebody said they were disappointed because it doesn't tell you what batteries it takes. Listen, <laughs> it doesn't take batteries. I read that review and took it apart myself and was like, oh, well, it looks like maybe they used the components from something that did take batteries, but no, it's, it's not supposed to be somehow a vibrating dermaplane system. No, it's not supposed to be that. But I was telling my partner about this. I was like, can you believe this thing actually comes apart? How silly is that? And she says, yeah, I know. I took it apart when you first got it. I wouldn't have even thought to do that. That is such a, a, a funny difference between our brains. I had no idea until I read that review. But yeah, just ignore that. It's just part of the components. And I'm not sure they sell this anymore, but this was a, a cooling eye globe that was included with my holiday set I bought from Target. Some of you bought that set, right? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I think it's a really cute addition, something unique to include into a set. I don't think you need to run out and buy a product like this. Personally, I do like jade rollers a little more, but it was a nice touch. And you know it's good because it's blue. And one final product in the other section here. This is the Backup Plan Acne Control Body Mist. Now you already saw me talk about this if you saw last week's body care video, but I do really like it. I think it's a wonderful acne treatment, especially for body acne. It's made with 2% salicylic acid, tea tree oil, and witch hazel, which sometimes can be iffy ingredients, but again, body skin is a lot more tough. So I do think it's a great product. My back is actually free of acne. I'm very happy about that. So let me go ahead and take you through my AM skincare routine. I purchased the Baby Cheeks All-in-One Hydrating Milk, which they kind of advertise as a toner, but also if you get into the description here, it says do it all toner, cleanser, and makeup remover that leaves skin velvety soft. Well, that was very intriguing to me as somebody who typically doesn't always wash my face in the mornings. I like to use a micellar water and that's it. And one of the ways that they advertise to use this is something that you can use post-workout. So it just kind of sounded to me like it may be a very gentle micellar water. And I do think that's true. That is exactly how I used this. I will say I'm kind of, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this packaging, which is really a funny way to start out this video because overall I don't feel that with any other products than this. But what you have to do is take a pad of some sort and squish down on this bottle and then it will release the liquid upwards. I thought that would be really interesting, but I discovered that it actually doesn't always work as planned. I didn't actually enjoy using this with the disposable type of cotton rounds. I'm showing you the face halo, which works well. It doesn't allow it to leak out the sides, but with just your regular cotton pads, yeah, sometimes I lost some of the liquid. So I actually kind of feel like I maybe used up more of this than I would have anticipated for a three week trial. With the way I used it, I'd have to buy this every six weeks. Granted, it's not expensive, so that's nice. And it also is truly very hydrating. It's made with coconut water, which has a very different chemical composition from coconut oil. So you may be able to use coconut water even if you are sensitive to coconut oil. It contains algae extract, which you know I love. You know I love at this point. And of course, the bamboo extract, which is also used in hydrating products. So overall, I do think this is a product for dry skin. It has the made for dryness logo that we talked about on it. Yeah, I do think it actually is a great product for that purpose. Let's talk about my absolute favorite category. Next, serums. I did purchase actually a total of four serums. We're going to talk about two that I used in the morning and one that is kind of more of an oil in my head at least. So let's start with the Just Breathe Clarifying Serum, which is the serum that Verst has made for problem skin. You'll have to pardon me here with my ingredients. I admit sometimes I get tired of holding onto boxes, so I just ripped the ingredients off that holiday set. 
Would you want to hold on to boxes forever? No. Oh, and by the way, you have to go to the website to actually get the specific percentages, but Verse does disclose that on the website. So we are getting 1% niacinamide in this product, which is overall lower, but you know what? That may be a perfect level, especially if you are layering a lot of products that contain niacinamide. We also have willow bark extract, which is at 0.2%. We have 1% zinc in here, salicylic acid, they have not disclosed that percentage, although it's very difficult to guess how much of that is in here. And then uh, some other interesting antioxidant rich ingredients, horse chestnut, that's interesting. I actually think this is one of my favorite products from Verst, even though I didn't initially expect it. With those low percentages, as somebody who typically uses about a 2% salicylic product, I didn't really expect it, although I will say, well, more on that in a moment, but it's a very light texture. It absorbs very quickly into your skin, completely clear. So it's funny, you know, lower percentages, but actually ended up being an absolute favorite, and I think it'll be really nice to turn to this if my skin is ever kind of in a bit of a compromised state. You know, I have certainly messed up my moisture barrier multiple times, and I don't want to just give up these ingredients that I need. Sometimes I just need them to be at lower concentrations. So turns out this is a favorite. Then we have the Stroke of Brilliance Brightening Serum, which is made with vitamin C and licorice, and it says it is made for dullness and aging skin. This is another really interesting product. First of all, I do have to tell you about the texture and the scent. It's got a bit of a color to it. So you see it's kind of a cloudy, brown, beige type of color. And the scent, the scent is something else. These are of course fragrance-free, fully unscented products. So with this containing vitamin C and licorice, it kind of smells like candied hot dog water. Mm, yeah, if you just took some strings of licorice and you mixed them into the soup that comes out of your hot dogs, am I explaining this well? Do you wanna try it? I'm basically saying I don't know if everybody's gonna love the smell of this, but I did like the results. Oh, the ingredients are so interesting. 0.5% sodium ascorbyl phosphate. That's an old favorite of mine. I now use it at higher percentages, but that's a great level for beginners in particular. That's very close to the level of the Ule Henriksen Truth Serum. And then you're also getting 1% niacinamide, that licorice, turmeric, other anti-inflammatory ingredients. So this is really a, a wonderful choice for problem skin that needs some brightening. But let's just really quickly talk about the limitations of an inky list. I, oh, I don't even know if I really want to have this conversation, but, you know, an inky can only tell you so much because of the way our regulations are written, because anything after 1% can be at any order whatsoever. So you could very easily look at this and make incorrect assumptions. If they weren't disclosing, see that's what's so great about Verst disclosing all of these percentages. Now that we can look at the website here and see, okay, so we have 0.5% sodium ascorbyl phosphate, we find it in that list, we know exactly what that concentration is. But if you didn't know that, you could look at this list, find the phenoxyethanol ingredient and say, okay, so that's the 1% line. That means the sodium ascorbyl phosphate is in here at maybe 15%. That sounds good. 20% licorice. And you'd be so incorrect. I promise I'm not coming for anyone's favorites. I'm not coming for anyone's favorites. What I'm trying to say here is this is why brands should just be transparent from the start. So we aren't over here, you know, making guesses at inky lists. Without that information, everything we say about an inky is a guess. My final thoughts on this one, I like it. Not sure it's going to be a long-term favorite. Not sure it's gonna really stick around, but I will say one more thing. Prior to this trial, please forgive me, but I was using a bit of a bougie product, the SkinCeuticals Silamarin CF, which may be $160. Whereas these are $20, a little tiny, tiny bit of a price drop. It's nothing, it's nothing big. No, it is. It, it actually is a huge price difference. What's interesting is that that product only uses 0.5% salicylic. So I actually had dropped to a lower percentage, but I was using it daily. And that is 10% L-ascorbic. Again, that's why I said in the intro, I wish I'd combined this. I would love to know if a combination of these two would act similarly to that product. Unfortunately, I just don't know. But I mean, if it does, that's a quarter of the price for double the quantity. 
and less irritation. Sodium ascorbyl phosphate is less irritating and more stable than L-ascorbic. So again, ultimately, I wish I'd layered this. I wish I'd started with this and finished with this one. Sodium ascorbyl phosphate doesn't need to be applied directly to your skin because it is a vitamin C derivative. So just take that as a, a gentle recommendation. If you are someone who owns these two products, that's what I would do if you're not seeing as much in terms of results as you would like to. And then one more oil serum. That is indeed what this is called, the Sunday Morning Antioxidant Oil Serum. Now, to me, I treated this more as an oil, a lot because on the box here it says, if you're layering serums, use this last. They're kind of suggesting that it truly is a hybrid of a serum and an oil, and you would want your oil to follow either your serum or potentially your moisturizer. With this being light, I'd put it before your moisturizer. What you should know with this product is that you do get these two distinct layers, a serum and an oil layer, so you'll have to shake it up really well before you apply it. You can see it still has some separation there, and it does separate again very quickly, so you may have to shake it multiple times if you're going to dip into it more than once. It's very, very light feeling on your skin. So for me, with my dry skin, I like it, but I think I prefer some other oils, much more uh, rich feeling oils on my own dry skin. Nonetheless, this may be absolutely perfect for oily skin. You know, I'm sure you all know by now that just because you have oily skin does not mean that oils are off limits. It just means you have to find the right one for your needs. And this one is a very nice, of course, antioxidant rich formula. We have 22% tea seed oil, which you can easily see once it starts separating again. That is not to be confused with tea tree oil. They're very different. Tea seed oil is very calming and soothing for the skin. And then also 1% jojoba and 0.46% sea buckthorn. So again, lower levels of those, but that keeps it much lighter in consistency. So again, I'm gonna say, you know, for me, not an absolute holy grail level product, but I think it's so nice to see something different and unique and still in the drugstore range on the market. So I respect this product, even though it was not a personal favorite. The Versed Moisturizers. Oh my goodness, these are some of my favorite finds from the entirety of Versed, and I'm so glad that they came out with the small size of the Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream. This one is made for oily skin types. I'm so glad they came out with this because I didn't want to buy a full size of this, but I did want to test it. I know that this is a very popular product and I wanted to see how it would go for me. Before I get into individually reviewing these, what I want to tell you is I think Versed has done such a good job on these two moisturizers. A lot of times when I talk about moisturizers from brands, I find myself saying, you know, either there's not a lot of difference between the two or they went too much into the middle. They tried to please all skin types, which I don't really think is a smart approach. I think a brand should come out with a heftier moisturizer for dry skin and a lighter version. And that's what Verse did, and they did it so incredibly well. And one more note, well, two more notes while we're here. So I do think that with moisturizer, it's a category that I absolutely think you do need to have in your routine, but I think that you may not like the distinction between for dry skin and for oily skin. I think with moisturizer, you have to find the one that works for you. My partner has a much more dry skin type, but she hates, she hates the feeling of moisturizer on her skin. She hates it so much, and I think that she's not alone. I think there's probably other people with dry skin who don't want to be walking around looking like I currently do as somebody who loves moisturizer. Y'all, I want to feel my moisturizer on my skin all day long. I love how moisturizer feels. So it's okay if you don't, and you may actually love this one. This is Ara approved, by the way. She's only approved two moisturizers ever. She liked the Glow Recipe Watermelon one, and now this. She said it feels like nothing on, so that is fantastic to find. Um, also, with moisturizer, I genuinely think you can save your money in this category and go with the drugstore option. The most important thing for moisturizer to do is to lock in your serum steps to protect your skin. So this is one of my top save categories, and Verse did this well. Let me break them down a little more for you. So the Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream, they actually say this is for all skin types and it is a light jelly-like moisturizer that keeps the bounce in your skin. I do feel that for me, it does not feel like enough on my skin, although I did enjoy mixing the 
oil serum into this. That did work for my skin. This is made with aloe and green tea, and they don't disclose the percentages. This isn't really an active product, so it doesn't matter as much. There's no added fragrance, there's no added irritants, and of course aloe and green tea are both very soothing ingredients that help to regulate oil production. So they're right, all skin types could enjoy this, whether you have dry skin or oily skin, but if you like heavy moisturizer, you're not gonna love it as much. The Skin Soak Rich Moisture Cream is absolutely made for people who have either dry skin or just love to feel their skin coated in a luxurious and beautiful moisturizer. If you can't tell, I love this product. This is made with squalane, another old favorite of mine. I love squalane. It's actually a lighter oil, but it's very protective, very similar to our own oils, so it's, it's very easy to use, gets along with your skin. Red algae extract, we have another video on algae if you are interested in that. Wonderful ingredient with a lot of benefits. Let's chat about my PM routine. I have some true favorites here. Oh, I have some favorites. So, I bought the mini size of the Day Dissolve Cleansing Balm. If you are familiar with the much more expensive Elemis Cleansing Balms or Emma Hardy, those types of expensive cleansing balms, this is almost like that in a light version. It does still have a smell to it. Just so you know, this is not essential oil free. It actually contains eucalyptus oil, but more on that ingredient later this week. I actually, I might like that ingredient. Don't get mad at me for liking an essential oil. We'll talk about clinical research in a, in a few days on this channel, you'll see. But anyway, it does contain that ingredient and it does smell absolutely beautiful. If you love essential oil smells like you get from Elemis and from Emma Hardy, it's beautiful, but the texture is completely different. This is one of very few cleansing balms where you scoop it out, you put it on your fingers, and it just immediately starts turning into an oil consistency. It is so easy to spread it across your skin and it just dissolves your makeup as you massage it into your skin. It is a beautiful, beautiful texture. And also I've noticed some cleansing balms remove makeup better than others. I do think that the ones that feel more oily tend to be better at removing makeup. I think it's just that they're able to get in there into your lashes a little better, right? I think that makes sense perhaps. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it won't be for everybody for sure, just because of the scent alone, but this really appeals to me. I love this. I no longer have to wait for the Alta 21 Days of Beauty 50% off Elemis products. That's how much I love this. I love this. Again, not for everybody, but mmm, mmm, absolute favorite. And then the Gentle Cycle Milky Cleanser. So many of you recommended this and I absolutely love it. Now, just so you know here, there are a lot of different cleanser options from Verst. I bought this one, which is made for dry skin, and I agree, I think this is for dry skin. I do not think you are going to like this if you have oily combination skin, or if you do not like for your skin to feel very moisturized after you cleanse. Your skin actually does feel almost like it's got a serum on it, something very light, not something heavy, not that same sensation after using the Glow Recipe Cleansing Balm, but it does feel Hold on, I'm trying to describe it. It just feels like there's something on your skin. I don't think I can describe it better than that. So again, not gonna be for everybody. Also worth noting, it has an odd smell to it. This one is completely fragrance-free and essential oil-free, but I don't mind that at all. For me, the most important part of cleansing is to cleanse my skin. I also, much like I was talking about with the moisturizer category, I think you can save your coin on cleanser. It's a product that you don't leave on your skin for too long, so why overly invest in those ingredients? I also bought the new Advanced Collection from Verst, which I talked about in a What's New in Skincare a while ago. I will say, initially I was a little hesitant, even though I was also excited for these, because they are kind of more expensive drugstore products. I was a little skeptical of, well, will they live up to that extra $5 more? You know, that's where it starts getting into that almost mid-range prices. But actually, they do. I think these are absolutely beautiful products. So let's start with the Auto Save Advanced Restoring Serum. This is a beautiful, creamy type of serum. So I actually 
really enjoyed using this after my retinol because remember in the beginning of this video I said I wasn't willing to give up my retinol but my current retinol is pretty basic so this ended up being absolutely wonderful to layer with it and then every other night I just used this entirely on its own. This is made with 3% microalgae, 3% THD ascorbate. That's a different vitamin C derivative, one that actually may be better for anti-aging purposes, whereas the sodium ascorbyl phosphate in the other vitamin C serum may be better for acne-prone skin, 0.5% ferulic acid, and 0.5% fluoritin. Oh, we already talked about SkinCeuticals in this video. So again, it's really interesting to see a product here that is made with fluoritin. It's a little less common. And then it's so nice to know the percentage of that microalgae that you're getting in this product. So they say this one is for aging skin and dullness. Overall, it's a beautiful formula. No added fragrance, no added irritants, no essential oils. The Recovery Mode Advanced Night Cream. So this one is made with 2% purple tea and purple rice, which does give it a natural purple color, even though there's no added dye. 1% chlorella vulgaris, 1.5% coffee seed cake, and 2% marula oil. I love, love the packaging of this, and it is really smart, given that it is very rich in antioxidants, to have that pump-like delivery. This is similar to Drunk Elephant's moisturizers in that you pump it down. You don't lose any of this in the way you do with the uh, micellar water I was talking about or the toner I was talking about earlier. And since they only have one night cream, I do think it's interesting that we had that long conversation about the differences in the moisturizers, and this one is in the middle. So this one I actually think is maybe going to be too light for some people, but then also potentially too heavy for others. However, it's a night cream, so I'm a lot more flexible here. And again, you know, what's so interesting to me about this collection is that we are starting to talk a lot more about algae. It's no longer limited to just La Mer products, right? So it's fantastic to see those ingredients disclosed at the percentages that they're in in much more accessible pricing. Three more products and I have taken you through my entire versed skincare journey. Okay, so the Nixit Complexion Solution, I actually think they might be discontinuing this. I noticed it is on clearance on the website. So first of all, this is supposed to be a spot treatment, but it is extremely runny. It's very strange as a spot treatment. It's hard to get it directly over a pimple. It's just kind of an odd product overall. I ended up using it as an oil instead, which kind of worked, and here's potentially why it worked. So this has 0.3% tea tree oil, 0.45% salicylic acid, 0.14% lavender oil, 0.2% rosemary oil, and 0.06% lemon oil. So, you know, not an essential oil-free product at all, and again, we're going to talk more about this later this week. I kind of think that those are good percentages overall to have in this product, but I think Personally, I would like to not see the lemon oil. It's kind of a shame. Lemon oil is one of those essential oils where I don't think the pros outweigh the cons. In fact, I kind of think the opposite. So, you know, I did use a, a fair bit of this trying to appreciate it, but overall, overall it is a pass for me. Basically, it looks like it's on the way out and I don't think it's, it's not a huge loss in my personal opinion. Now, on the flip side of the coin, the Fix Emergency Eye Mask, this one also came in that holiday kit. I love this. I did initially make a bit of an oopsie with this. I thought that I could just use a little bit less of this and use it as a daytime eye cream. How quickly I learned that I was wrong. I was picking the little balls of eye cream out of my concealer. You all know. I know you all have been there before, right? It's a true eye mask and it's truly an innovative idea in that it's kind of an alternative to those, you know, the eye gels that you stick on your eyes. Instead, what you do with this is you load up your eye area with it, leave it on for, well, how long does it recommend? 10 minutes and then you tissue off the excess. Do be careful not to get this one into your eye. It's so funny to say, but it's a very soothing formula with cucumber, peptides for anti-aging purposes, rosehip oil, and yet it does sting your eyes. Used correctly, this is a beautiful product. It is very hydrating and again, a great alternative to other eye masks. Brilliant, brilliant idea. And my final product for this video, the Shortcut Overnight Facial Peel. 
Oh, this one is so funny. So apparently this is one of the best sellers from Burst. And in some ways, I can see why. It is to be used very differently than you might expect. You wash your face and you put this on and you go to bed. But take note of what I just said. I think it's so funny that the description here says, I'm a resurfacing peel. A combination of exfoliating acids, vitamin A and E works while you sleep to help refine skin's texture. And again, it's a bestseller. A lot of people love this. But because I took a historical approach to versed skincare, I did some digging and I think it is so funny in retrospect that this product in particular is the one that Versed didn't want to tell people about. According to a person on Reddit who asked for the percentages, keep in mind, Versed is a two-year-old company, okay? So they asked them back when they first introduced the brand, they said, what is the percentage of those glycolic and lactic ingredients? And according to this person, and I can't confirm this myself, but according to this person, they said that Versed's reply was they don't disclose those percentages because they don't want people to get too hung up on those percentages. I would typically agree with that in a lot of ways. I agree with that when we're talking about niacinamide, right? You will know I agree with that. But they finally did. And are you ready? Here's uh, what it says on the website. Lactic acid, 0.01%. Glycolic acid, 0.01%. Vitamin A in the form of retinal palmitate, 0.01%. Rosehip seed oil, 0.1%. Vitamin E, 0.5%. Look, here's the thing. There are people that absolutely swear by this, and I do understand why, because it's very hydrating. But, you know, the, the name of the product is Overnight Facial Peel. To know that it's at those percentages, I, I don't know how I feel about that, actually. I really don't know. Just to be clear, I love Versed. I had a wonderful experience. I'm going to be sticking with a lot of these products. I've talked about favorites throughout this video. But it, it's truly perplexing. It does call into question, you know, how much should people know? Spoiler, I think it's everything. I think people should know the percentages in the same way Good Molecules presents them. But, you know... 0.1%, 0.01%, excuse me, 0.01%. If you're somebody who is using, you know, the Drunk Elephant TLC Framboose, or if you're using Pharmacy's Honeymoon Glow, speaking of finally disclosing percentages, Pharmacy is finally disclosed. That one is at 14%. Uh, AHA ingredients. So, you know, that's why these are so helpful. It's so helpful to know what these percentages are is so if you're using one product, you can guesstimate how another product is going to go for your skin. But again, it's a bestseller and perhaps it's simply a bestseller because of those hydrating ingredients, potentially because people have thought that they need AHA ingredients and they didn't. Instead, what they needed was hydration. I suspect that goes on all the time. So they bought this and it filled a need that they didn't really know was the accurate need. Is all of this making sense? I really hope it is. I feel like this is where I'm kind of falling off in my explanation. Anyway, my final thoughts are, um, I'm glad I bought the travel size. I won't purchase it again because I do love my moisturizing and hydrating products, but you know, it's just, it's so interesting. I wanna write a dissertation on people's experience with this. What about after they know? Has anyone, has that happened to anyone? Did anyone buy this multiple times and then later verse disclosed and they were like, I've been using 0.01% glycolic? All right, my friends, we have come to the end of my Verse skincare trial. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have tried any of these products, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. As you all know by now, you do not have to agree with me. You disagreeing with me may help other people to find the right products for them. So always feel free to leave your own honest, thoughts and experiences. And for those of you who are curious about what is coming next, it is... I just forgot the name of it. <laughs> Geek and Gorgeous. Okay, this was a long video, forgive me. Yes, Geek and Gorgeous, I'm really excited. Big contrast to the low percentage products here. We're gonna jump into some much higher percentages. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a truly wonderful week. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and I will see you all next time.